So today's battery is called the EG4 Power Pro and it's for people that do not have back problems because this thing is heavy. It weighs 282 pounds. And to get this out of the box so I could make this video was very difficult. I did it on my own though with a hand truck so I know you guys can figure it out if you have some friends around. Now the main difference of this model and the previous model is that this one is rated for indoor use only. The older model is rated for outdoor use, but this still has the internal heaters if you have a cold environment. Also, because it's indoor rated, it actually costs less money. And actually, it's cheaper than server rack batteries or any other 48 volt batteries, but it has the same feature set as a PowerPro outdoor rated battery. Also, multiple distributors will be selling this as well, including Current Connected. So if you like their customer service and support, check out their website because they'll have packages with this. And they're gonna be selling this with the 6000 XP. And that should be a very good combination. This is indoor rated, the 6000 XP is indoor rated, but you get the most features and output for the lowest amount of money. But first, let's go over the basic features. First off, it has a 14.3 kilowatt hour battery with lithium iron phosphate, and the cells are rated to 8,000 cycles. Next, it has a 200 amp BMS, and it has bus bars up here with four amphenol connectors rated for 600 amps. So you can connect this to lots of other batteries in parallel, or you can connect it to lots of inverters in parallel. So if you have three 6,000 XP's and you have two of these or whatever other combination you want to connect them in, it's very easy to do so. Next, it has a color touch screen, which is pretty darn cool. And it takes a second to load up because it goes into standby mode because it doesn't want to use the electricity. Imagine having this large screen on all day on a battery. That would be illogical. So it turns itself off. And on the main, whoops, no. It really turns itself off quickly. And on the main screen, you have the communication, the state of charge, and then you have the voltage, the total capacity, and how much current is going in or out. And under settings, you can change your communication protocol up here, the language, you can see the firmware version, and you can also see the voltage of individual cells. And next you have the temperature, which there's four temperature sending units or sensors in there, and that's it. Now on the top, you have the amphenol connectors, and this is where you connect your inverters and other batteries in parallel. This is the positive bus bar, and this is the negative bus bar. And this is quite a bit different than the outdoor model. These ones face straight up, and they're on the top, but on the outdoor model, they're actually on the sides. You can see them connected right there, and they're facing outward. Also, the communication ports are on the side, but not on this one. They're actually on the top. To connect other inverters and batteries, you need amphenol connectors, and it comes with two of them with each battery, but you might need to order more, especially if you put batteries into parallel. And all they do is snap into place, just like that. So we're gonna use this to connect to 6000 XP. And on the side, we have the on and off switch and a circuit breaker, and this is how we turn it on. Whew, that was hard. And on the back, you have a mounting plate if you wish to mount this on a wall. And it also has a rope on the top and the bottom so you can move the battery easier. But even with these ropes, it's very hard to move. It's very heavy, but these do help. So there are handles on this side, but I prefer this rope and using my body to push against it and shuffle it around slowly. So I'll tilt it and then push it and then tilt it and then push it. But don't tilt too far unless it will fall and break. And then slowly bring it back. But I'm telling you, you need to be careful. This is a lot of weight. And lift with your back, not your knees. <laughs> Imagine if there's not a battery inside and it's just gerbil food. And then you have like three gerbils on wheels and they just run all day long. <laughs> be better if we had nuclear reactors. I mean, it's 2024, but no. This is a lot of screws. Oh, there we go. But we've got a screen, so we've got a cable in there somewhere. Whew. That is dangerous. The amount of stuff that can short out right here. Now with open batteries like this, you do not want to drop a tool like this on these terminals. 
Man, it just makes me nervous even looking at it. These are welded and screwed on. I've seen that on a couple batteries in the past, but I didn't know they did it on the Power Pros. Now the overall build quality is very similar to most server rack batteries, so nothing really special here. Now I don't see the heaters, so let's look around closer. But this is actually pretty special. Look at how big these bus bars are and how it's connected to this circuit breaker. And this is rated for DC, so it's massive. And man, I love how the Amphenol connector connects to it. That is solid. I think these are heating elements and they connect to the metal that surrounds the cells. Wait a second, these are not heaters. These are fire extinguishers. They have sensors over here. And then the heater conductors actually go between the cells. I should have known they always cover it with this white stuff whenever you have heaters and lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now I know what you guys are thinking, why would you have a fire extinguisher system inside of a lithium iron phosphate battery? But that's actually for code compliance. Also, if this BMS were to fail, it's nice to have something that can put out that fire but these cells are very safe and you're not gonna have a self-propagating thermal runaway event with lithium iron phosphate. It's like the safest chemistry around, but you have to have these in here anyways now. All the connections seem secure. Everything seems pretty good. This seems like a pretty good battery. We have to put this lid on very carefully. <laughs> you do not wanna drop it. That was easy. So there's three holes on the top and three holes on the bottom. The center hole, you wanna hit a stud, and then for the side holes, you can just move it out of the way and then put the drywall anchors after you mark it. That's ugly. That's not good. That's better. And we have a system. Just need to hook up some solar and some loads and we're done. How easy is that? That's crazy. For the price of this, this is less than like an 18K and you get the battery as well. So you can go off grid for like a cabin very cheaply now. So I fired up and I have zero voltage and that's because it's looking for a battery. So we're gonna set up the battery communication. So what you need is the orange cable and we're gonna plug this into the can and then feed this up here into the battery communication port. And then you need to set the identifier DIP switch. So all the switches should be on except for the first one. And it should look just like this. And then you turn the battery on and off again and then you turn this on and then it should show you the state of charge and there should be some lines right here and the capacity in amp hours. And now the inverter just turned on and you should see 120 volts right there. And then it should have a smiley face down here. So that means everything is actually running properly and we can connect loads. So now this is a complete system that can actually turn on and we can now do a load test. And this is a 240 volt space heater and this takes 6,000 watts to power. So this is a good test for the inverter and the battery and it's on, and now it's on high, and it's pulling 6,000 watts. And on the battery, it says we're pulling 118 amps, but this battery can output 200 amps. That's 9,600 watts. And on the screen, it shows that we're only pulling 90% of its rated output capacity. So it can technically do a little bit more, but this is what it's rated for. It seems to be running it pretty well. So I guess I'll come back in like 10 minutes, but this is a purely resistive load with a small fan. So it's not that challenging, but I can't think of any other loads than a massive heat gun. So yeah, this is the max I can do with just a single inverter. It would be nice if we had two of these connected to a single battery, 
That would be awesome. That would exceed its rated output, so that would not be that good. But keep in mind, if you want the full output of two 6000 XPs, you need two EG4 PowerPro batteries. So there probably will be kits on the websites from all the distributors and Signature Solar selling kits with two batteries and two 6000 XPs. All right, let's turn this off. Now, unfortunately, this was supposed to have a conduit box just like the 18K. It was supposed to go between these two devices, but they never sent one out for me. But if you buy these together, you should get that conduit box and it will hide these cables. Now, something you can do with just this battery and a single 6000 XP is run an electric vehicle charger, a level two charger at 25 amps. And you could throw some solar panels out on the ground or just have a small array and you can run an electric vehicle with a system that costs less than $5,000. That's pretty darn cool. This is like a mini gas station and it will pay for itself very quickly. Or you can run heat pumps, 240 volt heat pumps. That's not an issue either. So fast forward a week later and we have the conduit box, but I'm not gonna install it until I get a second indoor model because I want to have two 6,000 XPs connected to two indoor EG4 Power Pros. Also, something I noticed this week is that the vertical bus bars are very useful for mounting configurations because on the outdoor model, you have to have a whole foot between each battery and those can take up a lot of space. But with these, you can put them side by side. You will not be able to access the on and off switch and the circuit breaker, but after it's all set up, you can move it into place, connect it with some amphenols, connect the communication cable and you're done. And under normal circumstances, you shouldn't have to turn it on or off or flip the breaker if everything's working properly. Also this week, I connected a NEMA 1450 to the AC input of the 6000 XP and I charged it up to 100%. And once it was fully charged, you get four bars. So these bars also show you the capacity. So you don't have to touch on the screen and wait for it to load. You can just look at your batteries and see if they're fully charged, which is pretty useful. Now, if you put these batteries side by side, like I was saying, you can do it with the conduit box. It doesn't extend that far off of the edge. So you could actually have like an inch between each battery and still use the conduit box. Also, this has lots of knockout holes compared to the older one that I used to have. And it should make it look pretty nice when it's all connected. Now this year, there's gonna be lots of other distributors and manufacturers making vertical mount batteries like this one. So we'll see who comes out ahead in the end, but it should be some fun competition. And I should have those batteries in the next month or two. So I'll make videos about those right when I get them. Now, before we end this video, video, I want to tell you guys to disable your ad blocker if you use an affiliate link to purchase this. Because I found out last week that over 75% of the traffic that goes through my links is not tracked because people use ad blockers. And then I don't get a commission at all. So please, oh please, disable your ad blocker for five seconds and then click on the link and then it should work and then turn it back on after you make a purchase. And I can't think of a solution besides asking you guys. I was thinking about doing a drop shipping website where you have an ad to cart and it's like Will Prowse DIY Solar, but that's just such a hassle. So if you can turn your ad blocker off, I would really appreciate it. Um, if you have any more questions or tests on this battery, please let me know down below. But yeah, we'll see if it has new competition this year and we'll see if it still works in the next couple months. Um, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.